This fly is the hammerhead. It's a fly I developed way back in 2009, chasing uh, Great Lakes carp up on Beaver Island in Lake Michigan. Wrote a step-by-step -step article a number of years ago on that's still out on dressed irons. There's a uh, link in the description below to that on how to tie this fly. There was also a video that was done by an old online magazine called A Tight Loop that I think is still on YouTube. Since the original inception of the fly and originally tying it and having tied so many more of it, I have developed a little bit different ways of doing this so that it's a little cleaner, just a little bit nicer. I think I'd mentioned in that article that I was considering doing an updated video on this. Well, I was requested by somebody a while back to go ahead and do that video. And that is, I should say, this is that video. So this is the hammerhead and I'll talk a little bit about the fly and how it's constructed, the thought behind putting it together, the pieces and parts that I used and everything as I'm tying it. So I'll go ahead and get started. start the hammerhead by placing our hook on the vise. This is a Mustad R74, which is a 4X long streamer hook, and this is in a size 4. Uh, you could use different hooks for this, as I'll explain as, as I'm showing you how to tie the fly. This happens to be what I had when the fly was created. You could certainly go with a shorter shanked hook, but that's what I had. Now, if you look at the instructions, the step-by-step -step instructions that I mentioned in the, there's a link in the description below. The first step previous was to tie on the bead chain eyes, but I've since changed that. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the lead on first. I'm using a 0 0.035 lead-free wire. This is actually, I found a little bit easier to, if you just go ahead and put 10 wraps on right here initially and then put the eyes on. So those are all ready. Now I'm going to attach my thread and for thread, I'm using a UTC Ultra 140 denier in black. The original instructions I used a 210, which you certainly could. There's a certain amount of pulling and tugging on the thread with all this rabbit and everything. So if you're more comfortable with going with a heavier thread, by all means, go ahead. I'm going to wrap some thread on the hook shank, ending about an uh, width of the eye behind the eye of the hook. That's where I'm going to tie in the bead chain eyes. I'm using four extra large gold bead chain eyes on this. And I'm going to tie these in so at their cross point, or I should say the connection point between the beads, which is right here, I want a good eye length right behind, or I should say in front of the beads and behind the eye of the hook. We're going to need that extra space when we go to wrap in the rabbit later. I'm going to do a few wraps, crisscross wraps, and then some under the bead chain and over the shank to tighten that up. Not a lot. I don't want to pile that up. I want to leave this space fairly open, and I'll explain in a little bit. At this point, I'm just going to shove that lead forward. And now I'm just gonna take some loose reaching wraps to go back to the behind the lead. You don't have to build up a thread dam here, but I do like to put a little bit behind it, a little bit over it, just to kind of help keep it in place when we are wrapping in the rabbit in a little bit. I'm gonna advance my thread down to the end of the shank, which is about over the barb of the hook. The eyes right there, you may knock them here a little bit while you're tying this fly. They may get out of whack on you. That's fine, move them back in. Don't worry, you don't want them loose. 
you know, and, and wobbling this way and that way. Um, but those are going to get secured in when we tie the rabbit in in a little bit. So now I'm going to put the tail in. The tail pieces of this, at the time, I was wanting something that would have some color to it, not a lot of flash. The carp where we were fishing at don't like a whole lot of flash. And I had a product on me at the time that was made by Spirit River. It's called a Mylar Motion. And this is a glow in the dark version of their Mylar Motion. I used a fluorescent orange and a fluorescent yellow in the fly. The problem is you can't get this anymore. Spirit River uh, went under or was bought up by Hairline actually. And, and it's not made anymore. At least I haven't been able to find it. So I still have some left over and that's what I'm going to use because that's what originally I had used. But Hedron makes a glow in the dark flash of boo that I think would probably work just fine. I'm gonna cut three strands off from one side, and bring those up the midpoint up underneath the thread on top of the hook shank. I'm gonna put in three or four wraps moving forward, and then I'm gonna do the other color of flashaboo. Now the flashaboo, or I should say the glow in the dark material here, like I said, I just wanted to add some color it does, and if the water's a little darker or deeper, it might even glow a little bit because it is glow in the dark. My main focus was to add something that would add some color to it without adding a lot of flash. So if you wanted to, you could experiment and add something else in rather than a glow in the dark flash of or mylar motion. It's up to you. For rubber legs, I'm just going to use these brown and black flaked uh, silicone legs, these silly legs. You could use, these are kind of a little bit darker brown. You could use also just a pumpkin colored, which is a little bit lighter. It's up to you. If you go with different color variations, you can vary up the silly leg color to suit your, your needs. I'm also going to get three strands of this and bring it up under the thread on top of the hook shank. Now I'm gonna put my wraps in working back down the hook shank to the end of the shank. Then I'm gonna fold the rubber legs and the mylar motion that's in front to the back. That's how the tail gets tied in. I'm gonna wrap all of this in, covering that up real good. Don't have to worry about a transition here. I'm going to move my thread almost up to the lead wraps. I want to be maybe an eye length behind those, and you'll see in just a second. Now, in the original fly, like I said, this is the hook that I had that I used at the time. My thought was to have a tail back here and some rabbit up in here. This space here it wasn't really needed. I mean, if I, if I had a shorter shanked hook, I might have even eliminated that and just brought it back. But... At the time, I just decided to go ahead and throw in some filler, and I used, I think I had some homespun yarn at the time. This is just a brown uh, Antron yarn. You could certainly use a, a brown wool, it's up to you. And as I said, this is kind of a filler. So if you are tying this on a shorter shanked hook, then you don't have to put this little bit in because this is just kind of covers up the hook shank. You don't have to use yarn either if you want. You could use some dubbing, it's up to you. I'm going to untwist this as I wrap this in so it doesn't go in as a cord, it just kind of lays flat. I'm going to secure that and notice that I'm holding it on the underside of the hook shank here when I secure that. And the reason is, is that in just a second, I'm going to flip this over to cut that off. And I want to flip it over at this stage to tie in the rabbit. Secure that and advance my thread halfway down those lead wraps. 
This is where I'm going to tie in the rabbet. The rabbet for the hammerhead is a Magnum Crawfish Orange. This is a hairline product, but Wopsy makes them. Other companies make them. Kind of like the crawdad color on this one. Uh, it's kind of a nice dark orange with some, some black barring on it. But this is a magnum strip, so that means that the hide on that is cut to a quarter of an inch, not an eighth of an inch, which is your normal zonkers. I'm going to take a look at that strip, see where the, the hair flows. In other words, the grain of it is all going down in that direction. I'm going to turn it over and tie it in with the hide side up, the hair down, and I'm going to tie that, secure the end of that right where my thread's at. What this does for me is if I secure it up here, it bulks all of this up a little bit too much. So I'm actually going to secure it back here so I get a little bit uh, less bulk in there. I'm going to wrap this in all the way back to the end of the thread wraps. Put a few more wraps in to secure that. You could, if you want, put some head cement on this at this point. Give it a little bit of extra security. I don't find it's needed. I'm going to bring my thread up behind the bee chain eyes, and then I'm going to bring it up under around to the front with a wrap here. This is just positioning my thread in front of the beads right here so that when I go to secure that rabbit in, it's going to come from the front to the back. You'll see in just a second. I'm going to start wrapping that in. I want each wrap to overlap just a little bit. I'll get generally about four wraps of this in. If you want more, then secure that a little bit further back on, on the hook shank. If you want less, then secure it a little bit farther forward. You do need to stroke the hairs out of the way as you're doing this. The easiest way is just moisten your fingers. You will probably get some rabbit hair on your tongue and in your mouth, which is the only downside, but there you go. Keep wrapping that until you've got that last wrap is going to be right behind the eyes here. Now, in order to tie this in and make things as clean as possible, when I bring this wrap forward, I want to make certain that the leading edge of this hide right here gets tucked in right behind this bead chain along the hook shank. So I'm going to kind of pull on this and stretch it just a little bit and even twist it so that the edge of that hide tucks right in next to that bead, inside that bead next to the hook shank. I bring it over to the other side. Take your time with this. Make certain you're keeping that hair out of the way so you can see what happens. When I bring it over to the other side, I'm now going to bring the whole fly up this way. I want to do the same thing. I want to make certain that when I bring that hide around, it goes and tucks right in next to that bead and the hook shank. That's why it's important that the previous wrap to this one here is, is maybe about an eye length, a half an eye length behind the beads, so you have a little extra room. Also, when I tied that hide in halfway down the shank, I found it if I tie it all the way up behind the eyes, as I said, it gets too bulky up here and this is harder to do. You want to leave some open space so that you can just tuck that in there. And the reason, one, like I said, it's going to be nice and clean, but now when you separate the hair to expose the leather hide that you're going to tie in, it's very easy to get the hair here going backwards, a little bit more there, and having just that little bit of hide, it tucks in really nice and neat between the eyes. This is part of the reason I didn't want to fill up that space initially when I tied the eyes in with a lot of extra wraps to try and secure it. 
because I needed a little bit of space for that leather to just set right down between those beads. Remember, I also mentioned in my thread I wanted on the front side of the beads. That's because as I wrap this in, I wrap it from the front to the back when I'm wrapping on that side of the, the hook shank. This is going to help give me a nice clean tie-in spot. When I originally tied these, I wasn't thinking about being nice and clean. I just wanted everything done. So I would wrap behind like this. And you can see you get this little thing here. And then you got to fill this whole space up with thread wraps to cover it up. And you even have it underneath. And I just, after tying these over time, just found I didn't like that as much. So I changed it up a little bit. So you're wrapping from the front to the back as you go over. Now I'm going to cut the remaining hide off. Here's a little pointer. You want to cut this at an angle. See how my thread is at an angle like this. I want to cut the hide at an angle too. So it's tight in along that thread. So I'm going to got to do this without actually cutting your thread. I'm going to bring my scissors in here and I'm going to bring them tight and I'm actually pushing them down. See if I can angle that a little bit more so you can see that. I'm actually pushing them down so that I'm right just a little bit above that thread when I cut that off. That gives me just a nice little bit of leather right here to tie in and secure that rabbit down to the hook shank without making a lot of bulk. I'm going to keep wrapping front to back. And then when I come to wrap on this side, I want to wrap from the back to the front. So I bring my thread around to the front and around once. And now I can come around from behind over to the front. And this is just going to give me a little bit neater head. I found that when I do it this way, I can minimize the amount of black thread between the beads, at the same time secure in that rabbit zonker real well. So you can see I get kind of a V going here and the wraps are going back in this way. And same thing on the bottom, but it all looks cleaner. It looks a little bit nicer. So once you have that done, bring your thread around the front. You're just for a head. All you're going to do is fill that in to taper that down to the eye of the hook. I'm going to put in a six or seven turn whip finish. You don't have to do it by hand if you prefer the tool. Cut my thread off. Next step, I'm going to trim the tail. This is, you could leave this long, I suppose, if you wanted to. But I like to trim this about the overall length of, from about the eye of the hook to the back of the rabbit. Just leaving that a little bit long. But when I trim this, I don't want to just cut it right off real abrupt. I'm going to go ahead and trim these so that they are different lengths. And the reason for that is, is that when these are in the water moving, the ends of them are going to flutter at in different positions. It gives it a little bit more uh, action, a little bit more life. I'm going to take my head cement, and I'm going to liberally apply head cement to those thread wraps. I want to make certain it really soaks down in there. I'll actually even wait just for a minute or so and apply a little bit more. And then the hammerhead is finished. So as I briefly mentioned earlier, there was definitely some thoughts that went into the creation of this fly when I created it. 
part of that was that you can modify this on the water. So if you're throwing this out there, you can cut the beads, the outer beads off. If you don't want that rattle or that profile, you can just pop those off. You can also cut the whole tail out. You can cut the, the mylar out if you want and just leave the rubber legs, or you can cut all of it out. And then you end up with just more of a, maybe a large nymph pattern or a small goby or sculpin type pattern, something like that. But that was the thought behind it. Now, the one thing with this, it's a large fly and with all that weight and everything, it does plop in the water. It does well when the fish are deeper and tailing and actively feeding and not as wary. In shallower water, it tends to spook them. There's another version of this that I've come up with and it's called the baby hammerhead that I'm gonna have a video out in another week on. And it's just a slight variation really of, of this, but there's no weight to it. And it's a little bit smaller. So it'll give you a smaller profile, but also less splash, maybe not spook the, uh, the carp that well, or that much, I should say. So that is the hammerhead and in its evolution, latest evolution, I should say. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, Remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.